Guys, online dating is like trying to find water in a desert for men and supermarket shopping for women. In this video, I'm going to show you the results of a Tinder experiment of an average, maybe even above average guy. And by the end, I'll prove just how bad these apps have gotten and just how much the odds are stacked against you as a man. Anyway, this is our male subject and here's a few more photos. To give a little bit of background, this man is actually an article writer who I've been chatting to on Instagram recently. And he's made a kind allowance for me to use the data he's collected off his own Tinder profile for this video. He describes himself as average looking, maybe even a bit above. I'd largely agree with this and think he falls somewhere around the 6 out of 10 range. He's from Canada, which is where he still lives and is based in a medium sized city of 1 million people. He's 22 years old, he ran the experiments for 4 months and as shown by the thumbnail he made over 16,000 swipes. There's two more things that are noteworthy. One, he purchased Tinder Gold, which for anyone who doesn't know is the paid version of Tinder that gives certain bonuses and makes your profile shown more in the card stack. And two, he's fairly tall. 6 foot 3 to be precise. I found this very noticeable by looking at how often he towers over people in his pictures. So this factor will likely have influenced his results. Now let's get to the profile itself. He used three pictures on his account. The first just him with a dog. The second a holiday picture in front of what I believe to be a frozen waterfall. And lastly just a basic photo sitting down with a clear view of his face. As for the bio, real basic, the name of his university, which I can't say in the video, his height of course, because why wouldn't you if you're six foot three, and then just a few hobbies he takes part in like snowboarding and hiking. Last two things, his age preferences were set from 18 to 25, and his maximal allowable range was set to the max of 100 kilometers. So, without wasting any more time, now let's get to the actual results. Again, over the course of 4 months, he swiped a grand total of 16,000 times. Of these 16,000, he swiped right or liked a little under 8,000. Which means he swiped left or disliked roughly the same amount, giving a like rate of 47.3%. Pretty much half and half. Now, for the nearly 8,000 women he liked, here's the kicker. Just 290 of them matched. So the other 7,000 or whatever didn't. They either did not think he was good enough or they simply didn't see him. This is an abysmally low 3.7% match rate. And if we average this figure out over the entire duration of the experiment, we find he's grappling with just 2.5 matches per day. Now on to message conversations. Of the 290 women he matched with, 99 of them had at least one message being sent or received. 87 of which he made the first move while the remaining 12 had the woman opening on him. Which is actually pretty good given the fact that most women never ever ever reach out with the first message on dating apps. Either way, this shows 191 of his matches served absolutely no purpose besides collecting dust as nothing got initiated. However, if I'm honest, I think our subject could have done a little better here. I think if he messaged at least 250 of his 290 matches, he'd still have a pretty large funnel to work with before going into trying to arrange dates. And this still gives a fairly large allowance of 40 for any women he swiped on by mistake, or took another look at their photos after matching and found they weren't as attractive compared to his first glance. Anyway, carrying on with his 99 messages. Right off the bat, 31, that's almost a third, either left him on red or never even opened his initial message, leaving just 68 conversations for him to work with. Then of these 68, a further 40 women ghosted him after a short message exchange. Our subject also gave up on 17 conversations himself, which leads him being left with just 11 phone numbers where he can carry on texting over WhatsApp or iMessage. Finally, of these last 11, after all of this effort, 
after four months of painstakingly swiping over a hundred times a day, every day, our guy was rewarded with just three dates. So as for the other eight girls, they either gave up on texting, declined his date offer, or simply never turned up. And just to be clear, there is no silver lining to this man's efforts. None of his three dates materialised into anything long term. So besides some dating experiences and a reminder of the futility of online dating as a man, we can safely say that this whole ordeal had been a complete waste of time. One more time, the results, in short form. Of his 8,000 likes, just 3.7% matched. Of this 3.7%, he got numbers from again, 3.7%. And of this 3.7%, a little over a quarter led to actual dates. For which, finally, a grand total of 0% led to anything long term. Anyway, that's the experiment, and now, for the remainder of the video, I'm going to be analysing these results and telling you what the key takeaways should be. But before I do that, if you appreciate the time it's taken to prepare this data and explain it in an easily digestible way, then now is a good time to press a like button and leave any thoughts you have in the comments below so far, as it helps the YouTube algorithm. Now on to the analysis. First, You've probably heard the term hypergamy being thrown around quite a lot on various channels specialising in dating. Well, let's set a few things straight about our guy used in the experiment. For anyone who doesn't know, hypergamy is the idea that women only want to date up, particularly in terms of looks, height, status, job, wealth, lifestyle, social circle, and so on. Well... When we take a look at our guy, he literally, literally ticks all the boxes. And I'm not saying any of this to blow smoke so you can leave your wheat waffles is a simp comment elsewhere. This is simply making a point. We've established he's average to slightly above average in the face. He's six foot three. He's college educated. He has a reasonable status job of being an article writer. It's clear from his expensive hobbies such as snowboarding and boating he's been raised in a family of the middle wealth bracket at the very least, possibly even upper. These hobbies also tie in with showing he has a good lifestyle. And lastly, it's clear from his Instagram he has a good social circle too. Therefore, in theory, given all these things, it should be that he satisfies the hypergamy of the vast majority of girls out there. It's a matter of fact, in the title of this video, I use the words average guy Tinder experiment. However, in reality, this guy is anything but average. He has better than average points in every category. Yet despite this, 96.3% of women out there did not match with this guy. And if I'm honest, I'm not even surprised because I know dating apps have gotten this bad. And this study I found confirms this. Men on average swipe right on roughly half of all profiles they see. Meanwhile women, they're swiping right on only the top 5% of guys they find attractive. So in simple terms, if you're not in the top 5% of men on dating apps, you may as well forget using them. This is why I want, if you learn one thing from this channel, I ask for nothing more than to stay off the dating apps. Just stay off them. There's far better alternatives. Check my last video for simple follow the chart guidance. It's funny, people out there say my channel is depressing. But guys, I promise you, there is nothing in this world more depressing than going on a dating app and having swipe after swipe reinforcing a potentially false belief in yourself that you're unwanted. I've been there myself, but now I've not used dating apps in over a year and I'm in a much better place in every aspect of my life. These apps are rigged against you and can give a sense of reality that's totally different compared to dating in the real world. Interestingly though, if you have female friends, they'll experience the polar opposite to men from online to real life. These apps are designed for women. In real life, women might get one or two compliments every so often. But when they log on to dating apps, it's like they transform into the hottest woman in the world. And this is true for even average to below average women. Every one of them is getting hundreds of matches and heaps of attention. 
And if you're a guy, don't for one second think you are or will be the exception to the rule. Unless, of course, you genuinely are in the top 10%. But the point I want to make is don't delude yourself into thinking you're a top 10% guy when your Tinder results show you're obviously not. Remember, if this man can't get decent results online, then chances are you won't either. And yes, although the pictures he used weren't the best photos in the world, I know most of you have pictures that are way, way worse. I know this because some of you have sent your Tinder profiles to me on Fiverr. If you think your shirtless mirror selfies will cut it, then think again. I also know a good 97, 98% of you are nowhere near as tall or have as an exciting lifestyle. I could go on. To put it in as simple terms as possible in this last point, here on your screen is a basic cost-benefit analysis chart summarising the outcomes if you decide to try your luck at dating apps as an average guy. Starting with the positives, you'll get some text game experience, some first date experiences too if you're lucky. You'll build a very thick skin as you learn to tolerate the endless flakes and ghosting. Lastly, dating apps may give you hope as you think you're edging closer to the relationship of your dreams. Now for the negatives, or what I like to call reality. First and foremost, it'll be a huge waste of time. These apps are almost as bad of a time sink as watching TikTok or being addicted to video games. These apps will also decimate your self-esteem as you face rejection after rejection. I'd like to point out that Tinder was originally designed to be like a slot machine, rewarding you with dopamine each time you get a match. And we all know how destructive these machines can be. They will also cost you a lot of money if you buy a Tinder premium. This is an important point. I guarantee you 100 times out of 100. Paying $30 a month for a gym membership will always bring better long-term gains than paying the same amount for Tinder premium. On top of this, Tinder may also cost you more money if you're one of the lucky few to actually get dates. And finally, this is ignoring potentially the biggest negative of all, which is the opportunity cost. With regard to time, think of the million other things you could be doing in your life that are 10 times better than swiping on dating apps. Even if you do cold approach, it'll give a far better rate of return and at the very least you'll conquer approach anxiety and be able to develop your social skills. Anyway, that's the video guys. I hope this has served as a good reminder for why you should stay off the dating apps. If you've enjoyed this topic, check out my other video on online dating explaining five more reasons why they are strictly a no-go zone for guys. A link will be below. And I'll also provide a link to the original article of this experiment in the description too. Besides this, if you've enjoyed the video, make sure you press the like button and leave any thoughts you have in the comments below as it helps the YouTube algorithm.